What's up guys, we're here with the Burp Suite Web Security Academy. We're going to be solving this lab, SQL injection union attack, retrieving multiple values in a single column. Now there are a lot of clues in the lab title there, but the essence of what we're trying to do here is to extract the administrator username and password using an SQL union attack. We're then going to log in as the administrator to solve the challenge. Now this is a very cool lab because it ties together a number of concepts. We can't just use a very basic injection string here. We need to have good knowledge of the underlying structure of the table we're trying to attack. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. First of all, we know that these categories are vulnerable. We've seen that in previous labs. And if you look on the left hand side, we have burp suite proxying traffic, and we're going to look in more detail at this HTTP request with the category parameter set to lifestyle. So if we right click and choose send to repeater, if we head on over to the repeater tab, we can see that specific HTTP request. We want to tamper with this lifestyle parameter. And if we were to inject a single quote as the payload, and send that request to the back end, we get a 500 response. And this is indicative of the fact that the back end is vulnerable to SQL injection. Now we're given some information in the lab description. We know that there is a table called users, and we know that the columns in that table we're interested in extracting are entitled username and password. Assuming we're going to be using a union injection attack here, we need to make sure the number of columns returned by the original SQL query matches up with the number of columns we're trying to extract. So if we adjust this payload here to help us enumerate the columns, we're going to use the union select and we're going to say select null from, and we know that there is a users table and then we're going to comment out the rest of the SQL query. So if we choose apply changes, we'll send that to the back end we get a 500 response, and that's because there's more than one column returned by the original SQL query. So if we instead select null null from users, go to apply changes, send that to the back end, we now get a 200 response. Now this is where the lab gets somewhat interesting. So in previous attacks, we could probably just do something like the following, where we try and extract username and password from users. So if we go to apply changes, let's submit that payload. We now get a 500 response. So what's happening here? Well, think about the data we are requesting. We're requesting two pieces of data, presumably compatible with string format. And we know with union select attacks, not only do the number of columns need to be equivalent, but the data types in those columns need to be compatible on both halves of the SQL query. So we're thinking maybe part of the original SQL query, one of the columns is not returning something that's compatible with string data. So we can now start running data type tests. So if we union select a string, let's just select A and null from users, apply changes, let's send that to the back end, we get a 500 response. So we get the feeling that that first column is not compatible with string type data. Let's confirm that if we choose null as our first column requested and have our string type data here as a second column requested, let's see what we get. Send that to the back end. We now get a 200 response. So here's the interesting challenge behind this lab. We only have access to one column, but we need to retrieve two pieces of string type data. Now the obvious thing to attempt might just be to run two queries. So for example, let's extract the username from users, go to apply changes. Let's send that to the back end. Let's check out the render output. And if we scroll down for the categories page, well, we have a small problem here. And that's because our string is still in inverted commas. So it's actually returning the string username. So let's apply that. Let's send again. Let's check out the render tab. 
And if we scroll down, we see that we have the various usernames being dumped to the screen. So we've got Carlos, Administrator, and Wiener. So we could then just do the same thing with Password. So if we go to Apply Changes, let's send that to the back end. Let's give it a moment to render. And if we scroll down, we can see obvious password dumps here. Now we could use that information to solve the challenge, but this is against the spirit of this particular lab, which is introducing us to the idea of concatenating strings. So using concatenation, it's possible for us to return both the username and password in a single union injection attack. Now, in order to do this, we need to be aware of the type of database that's running on the back end. And if we head on over to the SQL injection cheat sheet, under the section where it says string concatenation, it tells us that there's a slightly different syntax depending on which database is running on the back end. Now, we could try all of these. However, the documentation heavily hints towards the fact that this is Oracle running on the back end. Now, how do we concatenate strings with Oracle? It's with this double pipe character. So we want to extract username. We're then going to input our double pipe. And we're going to concatenate that to a delimiter. So we can just use a tilde or seeing as my keyboard layout's messed up, let's just create our own character there. So long as it's inside a string, shouldn't really be a problem. We're then going to concatenate that to password. So all of that is actually one long concatenated string. And because it's a single string, it can be returned as part of a single column. So let's go to apply changes. Let's send that to the back end. Let's make sure we get a 200 response first. We do indeed get a 200 response. So let's head on over to the render tab. And there we go, we can see administrator. We have our weird double arrow character because we have no idea where the tilde key is right now since we didn't set our key layout. And then we have the password for the administrator. So if there was any confusion initially in terms of which passwords matched up with which usernames, well, there's no confusion now because it's all being returned as part of one long string. And the advantage of having a unique delimiter or separator between the username and password is that you could process this information using a script such as Python or Node.js or whatever you want to use. And you'd be able to tell that script, everything that happens on the left hand side of the delimiter is the username and everything that happens on the right side is the password. So our goal now is to solve the lab. So if we go to my account, we get the option to log in. So we know that the username is administrator. We're just going to grab this password. In fact, we may need to get this from the HTML itself so we can copy and paste. So let's scroll down until we get to administrator. And here is our password. So let's just copy this. Just paste that into the password box. Let's choose login. And there we go, we have successfully solved the lab. So this lab was interesting for a few different reasons. Number one, we need to make sure we have the right number of columns requested as part of the union injection attack. Even though that first column was kind of useless to us because it wasn't compatible with string type data, we still needed to include it in the union injection attack so that both sides of the query were balanced with exactly two columns. We also saw that the data type requested is very important and needs to be compatible with the corresponding data type on the other side of the union select query. And in our case, we only had one string column. So we could only use that specific column to return the string type data we were interested in extracting from the database. Now we saw one possible workaround is simply to run two SQL injection attacks one where we retrieve the username string and the other where we retrieve the password string. However, that's kind of against the spirit of this particular lab and we certainly don't get any points for elegance using that solution. So the third aspect of this lab is understanding concatenation when constructing SQL queries. So the idea here is by concatenating, 
the username and password with a delimiter in the middle, we were able to return a single string, which only took up the space of one column as part of that union select query. All right, hope you found it helpful. Thanks very much for watching guys.